Hey everybody, Ricky here from Connery Meadows Farm. It's located in Ontario, Canada. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Today we are going to take mint and rhubarb. We are going to turn it into rhubarb mint drink that you can enjoy year round because I'm also going to show you how to preserve it and put it in your pantry so you can have the sweet taste of summer in the middle of winter. Let's head out to the garden and go grab some rhubarb and mint. Now here in Ontario, Canada, um, still relatively cool. In fact, today is a pretty windy day, but uh, that is where rhubarb thrives in cool climates. So we're gonna go ahead. You can see my garden in behind me here and uh, sheep and the goats on the other side. I've got a little basket here. So let's go and grab ourselves some rhubarb. Now, we're just getting ready here to um, think about haying season, so our equipment is out. And uh, getting ready to bale some hay, cut some hay. So uh, we need to feed these guys all winter long. All right, so here's my rhubarb patch. I have one on the end of each of my four raised beds. So let's get harvesting. One thing that a lot of people don't know with rhubarb is they think you're supposed to cut the stalks. You don't actually wanna do that. So rhubarb, you have to reach way down into the bottom. You wanna go all the way to the bottom of that stalk and pull like that. You wanna get that bottom bit. The reason behind that is if you don't take that bottom bit, um, what happens is the rhubarb doesn't know it's supposed to produce more and it just kinda of goes stagnant. So when you pull, whoo, she just got really windy. <laughs> so when you pull from the bottom, you're sending a message to the plant to produce more. The other thing you need to know is this is not edible belief and it's also poisonous to animals so I actually can't go ahead and feed this to my goats and my sheep and my cow even though they think they would really like it so this goes into the compost and the end goes into the compost and just the stock is what we're gonna use For some reason I came out here today and I actually forgot my hat so anyway what we're gonna do now is I'm going to take my rhubarb stalks and we're gonna cut the ends off And then we're gonna cut this top off. And then the stalk, we're just gonna put in our basket to take in with us. Um, and then I'm just gonna put all of these into a pile and uh, then I'll take them out to the compost. So I just... Uh... It's pretty simple, like the stuff comes off pretty quick. Now you're gonna notice, um, I actually have two different colors of stalks in here. I have some green and some red. I probably have about three or four different varieties of rhubarb. So over the years, people have gifted me pieces of their batches. And so I end up with uh, different colors. They're all rhubarb. There is slightly different tastes. Um, some people find the green a little more puckery. Honestly, they, the green or the red can both be pretty puckery, so I don't find that it makes that much difference. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do all of this. Here in Ontario, Canada, where I am from, um, in June, there's not really a whole lot you can harvest. We've harvested some lettuce, and we've harvested some radish, and you know, things are just starting to grow here uh, because we have a super short growing season. In fact, I just posted um, a garden tour video and you can see like if you're in the south, you've got a lot more going on than we do. And rhubarb is one of the staples that usually is on homesteads and farms. It's for generations in the north. And finding multiple ways to use rhubarb can be a little bit of challenging for uh, for, for people through the ages. You know, you can only make so much rhubarb jam and you can only freeze so much and you can only have so much stewed rhubarb before you kind of get sick of it. 
So this rhubarb mint drink is so refreshing. Um, when it's early spring, sometimes we'll get those really, really hot waves and you just want something that quenches your thirst, especially when you're out there starting your garden out. And this, this is it guys. It doesn't actually really taste that much like rhubarb when all is said and done. It's got just a nice fruity, sweet drink with a hint of mint. It is super, super refreshing. Now, I don't know about where you are, but where we are sometimes in the spring, we can get really, really, really hot weather. And it's not very often, but sometimes we do. And the basil's not ready, so I can't have a basil tea. Um, you know, there's just not a lot of stuff that I can juice into nice things that are refreshing and sweet and hydrating. This rhubarb juice does all of that. So the rhubarb and the mint combo is just lovely. Now, I am going to say the credit for the idea of this drink came from friends of ours, Chrissy and Andre. And we went to their house for dinner. They had this canned rhubarb mint drink and I gave it a try and it was absolutely fantastic. I went ahead and I did some research and the recipes I've come up with, there's two different recipes. One is for the fresh drinking with honey and the other one is for canning purposes. I did have to look up safe canning practices. So um, I consulted uh, about three or four different books um, the ball one in Canada, it's known as Bernardin, um, and a few other books, and the conclusion was the same. So uh, you can know that I am following safe canning practices, of course, do your own research. Don't just take anyone's word for it on the internet, but um, if you're worried at all, of course, you can always drink it fresh. So let's go ahead, let's finish up this rhubarb, and then we're gonna move on and pick the mint. So since we now have a rhubarb, Let's go ahead and grab the mint. Now I'm using a mint that's a combination of spearmint and peppermint. Um, I got it many years ago. So to be honest, I don't even remember the variety anymore. But I do also have ginger mint, apple mint, and chocolate mint, all of which I think would be really good with the rhubarb. Uh, but the apple mint and my uh, chocolate mint, I just got this year. so. Neither one of them are really uh, big enough to go ahead and um, use. But once they're big enough, I can't wait to try this recipe with them because I think the flavor is going to be absolutely amazing. In this pot is my ginger mint and there is probably enough there to harvest, but uh, we prefer to keep the ginger mint for tea, especially if we have an upset stomach or anything like that. So that ginger mint is just gonna stay where it is. Um, but over here, this is my apple mint. And like I said, there's, it's new. So there's not a lot of uh, growth in there. Uh, not enough for tea anyway. Um, and then over here, this is my chocolate mint. And again, like it's just been planted this year. It's doing well, but probably not enough to make a really good tea. So we're just gonna stick with the peppermint that I have. Now, guys, don't laugh at me. I did the ultimate taboo when we moved here three years ago. Um, I was in a hurry to plant things. And by in a hurry, I mean I was really in a hurry. And I made the big boo-boo of um, putting the mint in a bed on the ground and not in a pot. Don't do that. Bad, bad, bad idea. Very bad idea. This is my mint mess. Um, I have uh, grapes, which are going to give us our first set of grapes on the side and some flowers on the side and cute little garden, garden ornaments. But this disaster has mint, catnip and lemon balm in it. Um, and uh, you don't want to do that. It's spilling out into there. It's spilling out into these beds over here. And this is the front, like there is a bed there, but they're not contained in it. So in case no one's ever told you, do not put mint in the ground. It spreads like crazy. I dig it up every year. I gift it, I give it away. I tell people to put it in pots. Don't, don't do this unless you're okay with it running rampant everywhere. Anyway, let's harvest it. Mint is actually very easy to harvest. Um, you just, basically chop it down. It's like a weed, you can't really kill it. So 
let's give it a haircut. I have a pair of garden shears here. And so with mint, like a lot of other plants, you want to, you can see here on the mint plant that, well, this is the main stem. There's these leaves, and then off of these leaves is a little offshoot. So if you were to actually cut right above that little offshoot, these will grow new branches. So that's when I harvest my mints, I just go down and I make sure that I leave at least two, sometimes three notches from the ground, and then that gives it lots of room to grow again. So I'm just gonna come down to the ground here and we, are going to have some fun harvesting a lot of mint. And um, it, I, again, it's not really a plant that you have to worry about hurting. Mint is very resilient. <laughs> the only thing that I have to do in here when I'm harvesting is make sure I'm actually grabbing mint. So as I said, there is catnip and lemon balm in here as well. They all look vastly different, so it's not that hard to make sure that we get mint, but just, um, just so you know. So this one back here, this is catnip, and it looks completely different. That's how I know which one to uh, clip and which ones to leave. I think that's enough. I mean, I could go ahead and pick this whole batch, but for what we need, that's probably more than enough. There's our harvest. Let's go in and process this. Spent the day weeding after I collected our basket full of stuff. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna put it in our kitchen sink with cool water and we're gonna get let it soak and let any icky, crawly creepies find their way out. All right, so let's throw everything in the sink, mint and rhubarb. And thankfully most of the rhubarb fit in okay, but because I wanted to sit lower in the sink and not have to put so much water in, I cut a bunch of the rhubarb in half just so that it would fit a little bit better. And then I use my hand and I agitate them a little bit. Now keep in mind, the rhubarb did not have to be perfect. There can be blemishes on this rhubarb because the rhubarb itself is not actually gonna be consumed. It's just gonna be the juice of the rhubarb. So we're gonna cut it up into small bits. We're gonna add 12 cuts of cut rhubarb to our pot. Then we're going to add in four cups of water to our pot. And then we are going to add one and a half cups of sugar and we're going to put it on the stove and put our lid on and then we are going to bring it to a boil. Once it's at a boil, we want to turn it down to the lowest possible temperature that we can while maintaining a small boil and we're going to have it stay at that for 20 minutes. But first, we need to make sure that it is actually boiling. Once it's fully boiling, we are not going to put the lid back on. We're going to keep the lid off. It can evaporate a bit of the water. So we just keep stirring it until there's no big chunks. You can see we're 20 minutes in at this point and there are definitely no big chunks left. It has evaporated a little bit and now we're going to go ahead. We're going to grab our mint. We're going to stick that into the pot. And we're going to stir the mint in. Once the mint is stirred in, we're going to let it simmer on low for about five minutes. Once it's simmered on low for that five minutes, we'll give it another stir here. And then we are going to, it smells so good, put the lid on and turn the stove off and push it back off the burner. All right, now we're gonna grab our canner and we're going to put our jars in our canner and then we're going to fill the canner with water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill each of the jars of water first and then we are going to fill the canner to the line that you see there. The reason why we're not filling it all the way up is because once this is boiled, we're going to need to dump 
the jars out. So we're going to go ahead, walk that over to the stove, and we are going to put its lid on, and then we are going to turn it on and boil it. And you can see the flame is on there, and we've got it on, and we want it on high to boil it. Now once it starts boiling, you can see in there that it is, we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes. We want this to boil for 10 minutes with the jars in there to sterilize the jars. In the meantime, we're going to get a pourable glass vessel, a strainer, and some muslin. And we're going to grab a scoop. And we're going to start scooping the mixture into the muslin and letting it drain into the pourable container below. Can you see it in there? There you go, just to give you an idea of what we're seeing. And then we're going to put gloves on. And these gloves need to be able to handle heat because we're going to slowly squeeze all the juice out. And what we're left with is essentially some chunky pulp that we're just gonna feed to the chickens. And we're just gonna repeat this process until our pourable jug is filled. I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel, dip it in my boiling hot water, I'm going to put the lid just temporarily into the canner just to warm up the rubber a little bit. We're going to get our hot glass out. The other thing putting the lid in there does is sterilize it. We put our funnel on and then we're going to pour the juice into the hot juice, into the hot jar, fill it up, leaving a half inch to an inch headspace. We're going to grab the next jar, get it ready, move the filter over funnel, sorry, and then we're going to wipe the jar down really well with that hot paper towel that's clean, put our lid on, screw it down, and pop that into the canner. And basically rinse and repeat. So you can see I'm just quickly putting it in the canner. It doesn't stay in there very long. It's really more for sterilization. This is really it doesn't take that long to fill the jar. By the time the jar is done, I'm grabbing the lid out after wiping the rims down just to make sure that it's all sterile. And that is important when you're canning. And then we're just going to go back to scooping, um, clean the pot out, don't want to miss any of that goodness. And we're going to put our gloves back on, squeeze it out. Once that's done, into the canner they all go. And we're going to turn it back on and we are going to let it start to boil. Once the water starts to boil, then we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes and we're going to maintain the boil for 10 minutes. At the end of the 10 minutes, turn the stove off, set your timer for 5 minutes, take the lid off and just let it sit. It's important to let these have time to cool down slowly. Now we can go ahead, we can take these out of the canner and we can set them somewhere where they will be undisturbed for 12 to 24 hours, giving them the opportunity to seal appropriately. Let's go grab that last one. Here we are the next morning and they are all sealed. So just one thing I want to go over uh, about these. These are considered a concentrate. So you can drink them the way you they are. Like you can drink them straight from this if you want. They're probably going to be a little puckery. What you can do is water these down because this is considered a concentrate to water it down to taste. Um, and if you're serving this, say like at a function or whatever, throw some ice in there, throw a few more sprigs of your mint and it's a beautiful drink. Or you can just put it in your fridge, water it down and add some mint and drink it within, you know, three to five days. The recipe that we canned is out of this book. And Bernardin is the Canadian version of your ball book. So if yours, it'll, it'll look pretty much identical. It'll just say ball there. And Bernardin's the Canadian version of that. And uh, it's just there, rhubarb juice concentrate. So um, it's all in the book. Follow in the book on page um, 
193. The second way we can make this rhubarb mint drink is actually inspired from Poland. So in Poland in the early spring and through the whole spring and into early summer, they make this drink using fresh rhubarb straight from their backyard, fresh mint from their backyard, honey from their backyard or local apiary if they have it, and water, that's it. Those are the four ingredients. Now this particular one, you will need to drink fresh. So you're gonna need to drink it within three to five days of making it. It probably won't last that long though. The process to make this is almost identical to the one that we made with the sugar and canned, but this one is not cannibal. This is not a shelf stable one. This one you just drink fresh. So into our pot, we're going to add eight cups of chopped up rhubarb. Now feel free to um, half this recipe if this is too much for you. So eight cups of rhubarb and we're gonna do 12 cups of water. It's eight and there's our 12. We're gonna get the lid for this and then we're gonna move it over to the stove. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn our pot on and we're gonna get it boiling. And then once it's boiling, we're gonna take the lid off and then we're just gonna let it boil in total from the time that it starts boiling. Wait a few minutes, then take the lid off to the time that you're gonna shut it off. It's gonna be about 20 minutes. Really, if it's not ready, then you'll know what you're looking for is for the rhubarb to be all broken down and soft and mushy. And I'm gonna show you that. But for now, let's just get this turned on and get it ready to be boiling. It's just at a simmer. I just wanna keep it boiling down, but not kind of at an out of control boil. We just wanna make sure all those pieces, there's still some big pieces in there. I'm just gonna break them all down. Got about another five minutes left and then we'll add the mint. Right, so we've been boiling for 20 minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna to toss some mint in. And then we're going to turn it down to a simmer for five minutes. And then we are going to turn it off and let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. Shut the heat off, put the lid on. Let's let it sit undisturbed and cool off a little bit enough that we'll be able to strain it just like we did the other one. So we're gonna have a pourable container. We're gonna have a strainer, but because some of the bits can be smaller, we're gonna do what we did yesterday. And of course we're going to use a cheesecloth. This is actually muslin. This is one of the old ones that I used to use to make cheese. Sometimes they get a little worn out and then I switch them to making this. We're gonna get ourselves a scoop and oh, you can see the steam coming off of there. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to, oh, that smells lovely. We're gonna start straining it into here. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be very hot. We wanna get all of the juices out. So I've got myself a nice pair of thick rubber gloves and we, are going to gently squeeze. You don't want to squeeze and have the bag bus on you. So we're just going to take this and we set the lid kind of back on that to keep it warm. And we're just gonna gently squeeze this out. And even with gloves on guys this is really hot so be careful during this stage we want to get every bit of goodness out now, I'm just gonna set this aside for a second so we can put that in a jar. So I'm just gonna 
set it on the top of there just temporarily. Now from our canner, we have our sterilized jars. We're gonna go ahead and grab one of those. Now keep in mind, remember this liquid is very hot. So we're gonna put it in our jar here. Now we're not gonna fill it up to where you would fill a canning line. We're gonna go below. So normally you'd fill it up to there for canning. And right now, this is still too hot for me to comfortably handle. So we're just gonna put the lid on and we're gonna let this cool down a bit because once this is cooled to the point that I can touch the side of it, we're gonna put some honey in it. And this is honey fresh from our bees. You don't wanna put it in now though, because then the goodness of honey is um, just kind of burnt off because it's too hot. So we're just gonna wait a little bit. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna keep going with scooping more of this and filling up more jars. And then once we have them all full, we can check to see where our temperature is at Ooh, and add the honey. So you can see here, this is kind of what's left from us squeezing it out. It's uh, kind of just a ball of the pulp. And uh, we're just gonna put this in our chicken dish. Our chickens really enjoy it. Of course, if you don't have a chicken dish, uh, compost will be just fine. Now, if you're a canner that likes to reuse their lids, this one is a good one to reuse your lids for because you're not actually creating a seal that's gonna need to last. You can go ahead, whoo, that's still really hot, and use your lids. And we're gonna wait for it to cool down a bit, and then we're gonna add our beautiful honey straight from our hives. These three are still pretty hot. This one has cooled down a little bit, so I'm just gonna add a touch of honey to this one and let's give it a little taste. Now you can add anywhere from a tablespoon and up um, and it's definitely by taste. Put that in there and we're just gonna get a little shake. It's still a little bit warm. We're just gonna pop this one into the fridge now. Now when you go to serve this, you can um, add a little bit of water if it's too strong for you. You can pour it over ice. If you're serving it at a function, putting some ice and some mint leaves to garnish it tastes delicious. But I think it's a little warm to uh, get a really good flavor, but that's pretty good. All right, I can touch the outside of all these ones. So let's go ahead and add some of our delicious honey.
can see it on the bottom there. I think that's enough honey. Let's go ahead and put these in the fridge. So actually before I put this one in the fridge, I'm gonna show you the one that we made that's called the concentrate and we canned it. Now remember we used all the same ingredients minus the one we used sugar, the other we used honey, but the a rhubarb across the board. But I just wanna show you color differences. And that's the one. <clears throat> so this one is the concentrate. And this one is the non-concentrate. And you just see the color difference in them. And that's why you should be adding water to this one before using it, because it is pretty strong. But these ones are shelf stable. I'm gonna label them, and then they're gonna go in my cellar. This one's gonna go in the fridge, and we're gonna drink this one in the next three to five days. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. If you have any questions, of course, please feel free to ask. And uh, enjoy your rhubarb mint drink. We'll see you next time on the farm.